The Lulberts, that's our word, brought to you by Gropon. Am I reading that right? Uh, Gropon. And I'm here with Steve Miller Miller. I'm Jim Jesus. How you doing, Steve? Uh, if I were any better, I'd be twins. How are you, James? I am absolutely miserable. Absolutely miserable. I've been, like, exploiting. For those of you who don't know, like, I constantly, like, if I go down to the strip, it's it's about one out of two times So when I go down to the strip, I'll hear someone go, like, is that Louis C.K. over there? And I've, and I've had, like, women think, you know, just want me to doppelgang as Louis C.K., and that's been really helpful for my game. And apparently now he's... Um, his head's on the chopping block for just kind of some kind of like sexual assault thing where he's asking chicks to listen to a masturbate over the phone or something like that. Uh, it- side note, every time I go to the Las Vegas Strip, I get kind of the same effect, except people see me and they immediately exclaim, oh my God, Edward Stone's really gotten fat. <laughs> I never thought of that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so so like, my doppelganger like gang Stone went over there and ate way too much borscht. <laughs> so my my doppelganger game is uh, on hiatus until further notice. Uh, should should I shave the goatee? I probably should. Because <laughs> now I really don't want to get confused with them. <laughs> Wait for it to all wash over. <sighs> I mean, yeah, you give it a while, and then somebody, you know, I'm. Joe Biden or Rob Reiner, who you know, who do you have on your on your fantasy sexual assault accusations team? Uh, this should be a fantasy sport, much like football. Let me tell you, Biden is a sleeper. Get Biden in like the first or second round if if you can get him in your league. I'm praying for Jimmy Kimmel, uh, Jim Carrey, Sank Yeager, <laughs> yeah, Chank Chank Yeager, whatever, however you want to pronounce his name. Uh, Molony would be interesting. <laughs> Dave Rubin, but with chicks, that would be hilarious. <laughs> if he got caught trying to hit on chicks, that'd be great. One sleeper pick that I would definitely lay money on if there were a, a sports book that were taking action on this is Tim Cook. And I'll tell you why Tim Cook's a fellow rice queen. He loves Asian dudes. And in Cupertino, California, in all of North Northern California, generally, there are a ton of hot Asian dudes. And if I were walking around and I had unlimited power and unlimited money, and there were that many hot Asian dudes walking around, I would get real handsy in a hurry. And I can imagine Tim Cook is generally the same. Plus he's definitely got that like creepy Presbyterian minister vibe to him. So yeah, yeah. I bet you that that dude gets really handsy. He also strikes me as one of the old dudes on Grinder who says he doesn't have anal sex. <laughs> okay. <laughs> do, do you know? Do you know what? I think I'm going to throw him on there just just to be safe. And the reason why is because, like, as much as I've always been like, oh yeah, Apple sucks, whatever. I never actually truly meant it until recently, after he took over and just ruined everything. Apple just ruined it. So I'm, uh, yeah, I'd be happy for well, that. Well, when you when you mention apples to him, he thinks of a Korean man's butthole. So <laughs> these uh, things happen, Jim. Okay, but I, I, you know, I, I had a friend uh, who I knew on the internet. We used to remember this game called Counter Strike, like way back in the day. You know, back when I I remember it happening, when, but when I was gramophones were, the, were I was in. watching sports like a normie who doesn't care about anarchy. So. <laughs> Yeah, and he was in one of my Counter Strike clans, and we ended up becoming like real life friends for a little bit. And he lived in, I want to say the name of this the town is Fremont. It's it's a suburb of um, well, it's it's kind of in the the Bay Area. And I was we were waiting for him to get home or something like that because we were just passing through on our way to Humboldt. We we're like, oh, let's we'll stop by and say hi to him. And this the whole entire city was just littered with Asian people, specifically hot Asian girls. They were just. It was it was it was it was so surreal to just everywhere you looked. It was just hot Asian women just everywhere. And I was like, wow, this this place is surreal. Uh, I didn't check out the guys because I'm not into that, Uh, (laughs) but it probably wouldn't been off the par for you to you to find yourself uh, Kim Jong Un over there. Oh, he's so attractive. I don't know if anybody saw the picture I tweeted, but Wish is so good at su- suggesting products to people on their app that they suggested <laughs> that I buy this picture of Kim Jong, this sweat hoodie of Kim Jong Un in Elton John 1970s star glasses, and it said <laughs> Rocket Man on it. Yes, 
He likes to rocket in my heart. I love Kim Jong Un. Like if we if we want to take care of the North Korean problem, like once and for all, all the United States has to do is send the big three, as I call them. And I'm not talking about like LeBron, Chris Bosh, and Dwayne Wade. I'm talking about Steve Miller, Miller, Dennis Rodman, and Donald Trump. Oh, send the say- big three over. Give me five minutes alone with Kim Jong Un. I thought you were going to say Tim you won't have to work. <laughs> I mean, yeah, maybe Tim, Tim Cook can't handle it like I can. I bet you watch I, if Tim Cook is accused of sexual harassment, the guy that's going to be accusing him is going to be some really svelte, like 91 pound Asian computer program. Like the kind of like Miller Miller, would, I, I'd break that in half. Like I, I need an industrial strength Asian. <laughs> yep. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a sad day for me. Uh, I'm 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 totally bummed out by this. I mean, Louis C.K. is a great comedian. Don't get me wrong, but just that whole doppelganger thing is just completely off the table now. Now I got to. I like, could I couldn't be more happy to be banned from Facebook right now. Between oh, there what? being a mass shooting. Oh, you didn't know this? Yeah, I'm on thirty. I'm on like day nine of a thirty day ban. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. How, yeah, how did that happen? Uh, I committed the heinous crime of selling novelty aprons to people who believe in free markets. What? Yeah. You're a terrible and person. Here's the th- <laughs> it, yeah. If, if, if Facebook had just waited like 24 hours, I probably would have done something that legitimately violated the terms of service. Like if they wanted to throw me out for whatever reason, give me enough rope and I'll generally hang myself. But I felt, I thought this was a little, you know, questionable. Yeah. But again, I got a really long rap sheet because I love calling people faggots. And <laughs> oh yeah, uh, so I hear. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> De- you almost, definitely. You almost got a racially conservatives. Yeah, you, uh, you almost got like, a like if you if you are of a more right word slash alt right political vent, the likelihood of me calling you a faggot is way beyond <laughs> what it would be. That if you were like an SJW or like lefty, in which case I'd probably be angling to call you some sort of racist or bigot because, you know. Yeah, your appearance, you, your appearance, oh, I was going to say your appearance on the School Sucks Project almost got wiped because you kept referring to yourself as a gutter faggot. <laughs> that's, well, I, I don't understand why that's wipeable now. I mean, <laughs> what? If you like, were calling someone the, else, that would be one thing, <laughs> but you're calling yourself that. Well, sure. Like, I don't understand why that's bad. Like, I, I, how are you not allowed to identify a certain way? Like, we're we're okay. We're 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 okay with you know any sort any anywhere along the gender panoply. Like, you can identify. You can identify as you know being whatever age. You can identify this way. You can identify that way. But if you're a juggalo and you want to call yourself a gutter faggot, that's no. the biggest crime that humanity's <laughs> ever known. Jiminy Christmas, Democrats, SMH. Because <laughs> that's who it's. That's who it is. I mean, it's not Republicans that are like you know. Yeah, well, I mean, kind of operate outside of their realm. But well, we'll see. the The left is, is upset when you disrespect people's pronouns, but if you disrespect people's adjectives, that's a different ball game. It really, really depends. On, and if on you're the, an established leftist, you can say you're reclaiming the term. Yeah. But if you're just a standard issue shitlord that like doesn't do anything for my community, then yeah, you got some, you got some mansplaining. You got you got some gutter fag splaining to do. So yeah, so you were on the School Sucks Project. We should probably talk about that for a second. You were on the Philly episode. Do you remember what episode number that is? Probably like eight million nope. five or something. Whatever. Whatever. No, on right I now. have no idea. No. Nah. Yeah, so it was on their their tour. I'll link it in the description. I'll put a little note here. Um, yeah, we recorded it on a rooftop, which was interesting. It was very uh, late Beatles. Yeah, and um, it was a very interesting episode. I was and I did I. So I'm way behind on my podcast. I reformatted my phone, and before I lost could, your subs. Yeah, and I lost all of my because you can save like your subscriptions and all your, all your playlists and everything in an XML file, and I lost the XML file. And shit. And so I had to like try to remember all the podcasts that I was subscribed to. And, you know, then I then I was just backlogged with all the stuff that I need to catch. And I'm still way behind. I'm like three weeks behind. And uh, Baron contacted me and he was like, oh, Steve Miller Miller was on School Socks. I was like, really? And I was like, oh, and he's like, did he say anything about the Lulberts? And he was like, nope. And I was like, oh, OK. And then I waited a couple of days and then I listened to it and I was like, oh, that's great. And at the very end, you pitched the to get access to your 
uh, two aprons. aprons to get apron to, to get apron access. I brought aprons for the people. <laughs> That's this is an under uh, a, a lesser. This is only for deep cut folk. Uh, yeah, lesser known fact. I I brought a multitude of aprons with me to yeah. the recording, just like Lee Harvey Oswald brought a copy of Catcher in the Rye to <laughs> the JFK assassination. So I bring with me everywhere I go at least three not aggress the cook aprons in case I should meet someone somewhere who wants to buy one. Yeah. And so, like, I was like, wait a minute. So it's been like three days or something like that since I listened to the episode. And there's nothing on the website saying anything about aprons anywhere. <laughs> so I contacted, I was like, oh, shit. So I created a subdomain, gave you access to a WordPress. And from what I understand, it's still, you didn't touch it yet, have you? That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. So, I have my so in the, now, though. So, We're, so you for the talk aprons? Well, let's make this a little bit evergreen because in the future, aprons aprons.lulberts.com is where you could buy them in the future. Aprons.lulberts.com. If that's not working yet, (laughs) then who do you contact? Steve Miller Miller. I'm not banned from Facebook Messenger. You can hit me up on Messenger and you can buy your apron that way. You can Venmo me, Miller twice. Uh, You'll see a picture of me. That'll be that. Uh, You can Bitcoin me, which is on Twitter. You can hit me up on Twitter at Miller twice. You can walk up to me in Claymont, Delaware at any sports gambling establishment. <laughs> uh, I'll be in the bolo tie. It'll be very obvious. It's me. Uh, it looks like Edward, take my- fat Edward Snowden. We've, we've yeah. That. Fat Edward Snowden is a dead on description. <laughs> uh, it looks like Edward's been hitting the buffets too long. He got into a relationship with a nice Cowboy. Asian fellow of size. And, <laughs> and yeah, uh, I have a second apron design coming soon as oh, well. It's shit. going to it's go, it's going to be a red apron. It's going to be cotton. So the current apron, the not aggress the cook apron, is polyester, which is more stain resistant. This is going to be cotton because you can't embroider uh, polyester as well. So it's oh, it's man. an embroidered it's an embroidered cotton, and it says uh, your food will be ready before America is great again. <laughs> Which is a reassuring yeah. thing to and I'm gonna to, I'm gonna buy to, to tell people I'm gonna buy two uh, of the non aggression I'm, I'm probably gonna buy one of the other one too but I'm gonna definitely gonna buy one I'm gonna give or uh, buy two of the first one and the I'm, gonna, I'm gonna to give one away is these are all limited run aprons as like I I, I have a hundred of the non aggress the cook aprons and when I'm out I'm not making more like all there's right. gonna be a different design that's gonna come replace it and these will probably be collectors items worth easily six Bitcoin each uh, it. <laughs> In Ancapistan, like you'll be able to walk into the mall at the end, at the end of a long side night and walk in, uh, go ahead and trade like three of the limited run, eight, three of the small batch artisan aprons that I'm make that I'm making you, and just trade them for a nuclear warhead. No big okay. deal. It ain't gonna be shit. And the, all, all we have to do is elect Adam Kokesh not president, and then all that happens. So where's your, where's your stand gonna be located? Is it gonna be next to the 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 Hooker Church, or is it gonna be next to the atom bomb? A store, or is it going to be by Adam or uh, Austin Peterson in his Guy Fox mask? This is important it's gonna questions. Be, it's going to be between Spacey Mart for all your adolescent kid fondling needs <laughs> and Earthship Empire. Okay. Yeah, so living in an Earthship. So, so that I'm, is some gay space communism. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna buy two. Uh, I'm gonna use right. one, and then I'm gonna save the other one. So when you when you're out, when you're officially out, and people are are bugging you, let me know when people are bugging you, and then I'll do another contest, and that'll that'll be the gift, that'll be yep. the, the grand prize. I, and I here's the other thing is I will hold. Let's let's call a certain supply. Let's say five of the not aggress the cook aprons. I'll hold aside, like separate from what I sell, and then we'll give those away at certain points in the future. Uh, so we'll have a cache of aprons that we can draw from, uh, whenever we want to hold like a snap contest. But then also like after I'm out of the aprons, you know, I'll conceivably be demand and, uh, you'll get more people that'll want to give us five stars or whatever. And this is how we go to the moon. Uh, <laughs> we, you know, we have limited run aprons. There's high demand. There's not that big a supply. Everybody writes us five star reviews. We get to be the number one review, <laughs> re- the number one podcast on something, something. Uh, we're number one. We go to the moon. Bitcoin hits $10 million. We're all uh, millionaires. And then uh, also aprons. Okay. Settled. Yeah, that th- yeah. it, it's a plan to fame. This is the be- this is the best plan I've had since the franchise fees for the weed protest. <laughs> <laughs> I 
It's free speech, <laughs> but we charge for it. Uh, do, do they know that you're just going to be smoking tobacco? Uh, yeah, I'm going to okay. tell them it's a symbolic, it's a symbolic it's protest a sim- because it's I'm, a on, symbolic I'm, I'm on federal <laughs> probation. <laughs> Got to take that seriously. Yeah. So, yeah. So now I know how to get an apron. I'm going to put, I should probably pin this because I'm going to do another, I'm going to do, do another show next week. I'm stuttering like crazy. It's been a long night. It's been a very, very oh, long night. And another thing, uh, I'm also completely willing to uh, apron people up if they hit us up on Patreon. If you uh, become a new, what do you want to say, $5 a month subscriber for the Lulberts, uh and you do you you legitimately do a couple months, you know, like do one month and then, you know. Yeah, cancel it. You're, you're in Yeah, and then cancel it and then run off with your rape and tee hee hee, uh, got it at a third of its value. Uh, no, 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 no. But like you legitimately become a monthly supporter of the show. You enjoy what we do. We give you little laughs. You know, we confirm your little biases. We don't, uh, we're not Nazis. And uh, yeah, we, well, we no, vocal there's... fry you left. We vocal fry you left and right. Uh... And yeah and yeah so if you want to support on patreon then yeah i'll definitely i I would kick down some aprons in that case as well yeah and 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 my my patreon is getting kind of interesting uh i'm sure i mentioned it a hundred times i'm doing stuff like every day like there's something that comes out every day it's usually 100 percent of it so far has been a podcast i want to do like a live stream and maybe maybe some kind of written content in the future or a video um but I i just don't have the will to go on youtube because well, I, I do now. For some reason, like almost all of my videos were demonetized on YouTube, all of them. And I was like, okay, I was expecting this to happen. Demonetize is when they put a demon in, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, they were taking away all my, my my shekels, and then for some reason, after the and I noticed it was after the Prager University case was was filed. I was like, oh, that's interesting, and and that you know that they filed a lawsuit against YouTube. And I went and checked my YouTube. I was like, okay, let me see if, if what else they've demonetized. And almost all of my videos are monetized again, except for like a handful of them. About 20% of them are, are demonetized versus like 95%. And I was like, what the heck is happening? I, I contacted Freedom Tunes, uh, Seamus. I was like, is this, is this, like, did this happen to you? And he was like, nope, they're all still demonetized. <laughs> you lucky fuck. I was like, well, okay, three bucks a month is hardly lucky. <laughs> but okay, whatever. That's what I make on YouTube. You know, courts can make them monetize, re-monetize Prager University, uh, but they can't make them accredited. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fucking Prager U. Prager U. Yeah. What a strange bedfellows, you know, Jim Jesus and Prager University versus YouTube. Prager, Prager U almost kind of sounds like a like a like a pregnant fetish, uh, co-ed fetish, uh, fetish site, doesn't it, for porn? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, um, come meet the ladies down at Prager U. <laughs> yeah, so I, I don't know. I, I, that was kind of interesting. So I'm doing stuff every day, um, and none of it involves like sexually harassing or trying to rape uh, little boys and girls. And and uh, there's no casting couches. Um, it's a futon. Yeah, yeah, it's a futon. <laughs> How did you know? I have, oh yeah, I think I, I was bragging about it a while ago. <laughs> so I got my futon. I was bragging about it. Yeah. Gotta love my futon. Um, unfortunately, I haven't been casting couches. Maybe I should. Maybe I should g- play up the whole... <laughs> that should be the new thing. It's like, hey, if you're still into Louis C.K., I got a casting couch over here if you want to be on Louis. <laughs> you know what this entails you know, okay. already. Uh, this has nothing to do with with, with child rape, uh, at least not directly anyway. Bummer. But the, re- the reason I'm, I'm, I'm able to do this podcast today and not at work is because it's Veterans Day. So uh, I just want to thank the greatest veteran of all time, uh, Lou Fien, who was a cook. Uh, so, Lou, thank you for your food service. And uh, thank you for the day off. Yeah. Uh, I because here's the deal. Like it was, of course, like some sort of like federal lobby and like some correct deal. But uh, in my mind, I'm going to choose that Lou like strategically placed a couple memes in the atmosphere, and it resulted in me having a day off from work. That's, that's how I. That's how I choose to remember it. Yeah. So I guess this is part of the uh, the longer leash thing. You know. <clears throat> right. Well, yeah. Get longer. Get longer leashes and get yourself a day off from working at the bank. 
Uh, got a great betting system, by the way. So this can be followed on Twitter. I'm on uh, at Miller Twice on Twitter. But uh, I transferred buildings at work, and I'm now at a different bank. And at this bank that I'm at, there are a lot of loud assholes in the cafeteria who like to shout their lock of the century football picks, and you just bet the opposite of whatever <laughs> the chest-pounding assholes are crying about, and then you generally make your money. And last night it won again. Uh, they were nice. all over the Seattle. Well, did I lose you? I had gotten six and a half points. Yep. Oh, you broke up a little bit. <laughs> I didn't. Again, oh, I yeah. missed pretty much all of that. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah. So I made my first sports bet ever, ever. Um, was two weeks ago or something like that. Um, I went down and betted like twenty bucks on the the Golden Knights against <laughs> against uh, the the Blackhawks, and they were the Blackhawks were favorite. They were like plus one sixty five or something like that uh, for for the Golden Knights, and I was like, "Fuck it, twenty bucks! I can you know I could walk away with yeah. 50. 50. Let's try it." <laughs> and I won, <laughs> and I was so happy. Boom! Yeah. So Fuck yeah, you, we got a sharp in our midst, the Reverend. Jim Jesus. Yeah, and, uh, and, of, and of course, like after I did that, I was like, oh, should I go do another one? Now nah, I'm going to wait a little bit. And next thing you know, they're on a losing streak. They're still on a losing streak right now. They lost against the Maple Leafs. Fuck. God damn it. <laughs> yeah. I love well, I don't know. we're breaking up. They focus on a terrible team. Ah, breaking up. It's breaking up. hard to do. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to lower the bit rate, but go ahead. You're gonna is it, it'll make it better. But wait, just, yeah. if 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 you lower the hash rate, does that mean we have uh, less conversation in our wallets? No, 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 no. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know how to do that, by the way. But it, I, whatever, that's a technical question that I can address with you sometime that the people okay, don't need to hear about. There it is. They, they keep rearranging Discord. There we go. Well, this, this gee, it's almost like it lives up to the name. Yeah. <laughs> Discord is great though. Oh, I need an update. I think that's my that might be why. It was downloading an update. There we go. Oh, yeah. Not enough bandwidth. Not enough bandwidth for all these hot fire takes that you hear only on the lullbirds. And <laughs> yeah. We're giving them content, Jim. Yeah. We're giving them winning picks. We're giving them, you know, links to other podcasts that we've been on. We're uh <laughs> we're doing it. And selling aprons. Yeah, and selling aprons. Oh, by Most the way, crucial th- Speak, mm-hmm. Speaking of rare ass shit to sell, I stumbled. I was cleaning out my closet, uh, not figuratively. I was cleaning out my closet and I found a uh, a volume two. This is a while ago. Uh, volume two of Libertarians Against Humanity, which is like everybody's been clamoring for me to get a hold, uh, get get like reissues, get made. reprinted. And I'm like, yeah. no, because I already got it, the DMCA filed against me. I'm not going to challenge it. But I did find one more, and I was like, oh shit, that was the one I was holding for Kinsella, who ended up changing his mind. Um, and then I know Brittany Hunter, who writes for Fee, was like chomping at the bit for me to make something else. And I was like, okay, I got one more. And then she was like, she flaked on it. So it's up for sale. If anyone wants to make a bid, I got one left of volume two. Don't ask me for volume one. Not going to make any more. It's over. But um, and I got lots of volume threes. Um, and Open Bazaar is back in the news. I guess they have a new version out. And I've been kind of creating my store a little bit. You can buy aprons on it. Oh, you can? Yep, Miller twice. Nice. Although I'm going to change it, which is what we'll do that at the end of the episode. But yeah, okay. we'll formally name my apron company at the end of the episode. Okay. Well, we stay we, tuned. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll post a link once we get everything working. We're like Rush Limbaugh. We're going to go to break every four minutes and ten seconds. Yeah, 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 these liberals, they're 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 insane. I, I don't understand. I don't understand Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> I, somebody needs to write the, somebody funny, needs though. to write the script for a Rush Limbaugh Alex Jones buddy cop movie. <laughs> I know. I, well, I, I think it would probably be David Icke since they were on the same network for a while. Their radio shows were both on the same network. Uh, David Icke had a radio show. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know this. Yeah. Can you imagine how how great that show would have been? <laughs> the, I don't know if it's still around, but how great that show would be. Did I ever tell you the story about uh, Andrew Bassagio, the time traveler? No. 
So mm. it was the year 2012. I think you may have, but I think we should rehash it. That's great. Yeah, why not? For those of you who may not know, it was the year 2012. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. I was doing a podcast called The Panic Hour, a conspiracy show. And we were we were performing stand-up at a conspiracy conference where there were all sorts of conspiracy speakers. And uh, the headlining speaker that I, we were talking, like – after us. So when you perform as a comedian, generally it's a more famous comedian who headlines. Yeah. Like I, you know, like there's comedians that I opened for who are marginally famous now and on TV, etc. However, this particular night I was featuring for a time traveler, Andrew Bassaggio, who can be, who's kind of fallen off in recent years, but was on Twitter. Uh, he was a math professor and he, his most famous achievement though, is that in the early 1980s, he went to the surface of Mars with Obama and Henry Kissinger because there's a jump room off the side of the LAX airport and he and Henry Kissinger and Henry Kissinger's protege, 19 year old Obama or however old Obama was, uh, go into this jump room at LAX and they wind up on the surface of Mars and... He was there to talk about this and also talk about how he's a time traveler and how he wins the 2016 election, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, oh, how, there's out. and how there's multiple timelines, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, also, but, he's well, a Canadian. That, that's an easy out. Like, oh, there's a multiple yeah, timeline. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, it's the easiest out of all. But uh, Poe, fe federal felon, Dickie Allen Poe, my co-host of the Panic Hour, performed first. And he actually did pretty well. So I'm like, okay, I'm probably going to slay this conspiracy crowd, which is sort of an achievement as a comedian. Like if you can kill in front of a humorless audience, that's pretty good. So I go up and it goes really well. Like I'm shredding for a good solid 15 minutes and then I'm supposed to do. And then I say, okay, I'm going to tell one more joke and I'm going to... Each conference starts waving his arms and he goes... No, 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 no. And he like he waves me over. He goes, actually, if you can longer. Oh, we're we're, get, uh, we're getting. Hold on, we're breaking up a little bit. Are we? Yeah. All right. So let me lower it a little bit. Save changes. Lower. Okay. There we go. Let's lower the bit rate a little bit. Okay. As you were. So, the director of the conference like pulls me over at the end of my set, and he's like, you know, I need you to, I need you to go on a little longer because Andrew Bassaggio is gonna be late. And I walk back up to the microphone. I'm like, ladies and gentlemen, they just asked me to do more time of stand-up comedy. And they clapped, which was nice. I said, and they asked me to do more stand-up comedy because a time traveler is running late. <laughs> How ironic. He, he could choose any moment in history to go to. Well, he, he, was, he, was on the, he was at the right time for most of the timeline, so to, to be fair... And also, to, also to be fair, do you know how long it takes to commute when you are getting dinner on the surface of Mars? Yeah, gotta you be know. fair. You, the, the, you just met the craziest people. Like when you were in the world of conspiracy podcasting, it was it, it was great. You couldn't do any it, similar in a way to if you're in an activist world, how everything like becomes an accusation of racism or privilege or whatever. If you're a white male while you're doing it uh, much in the same way with conspiracies, uh, there's nothing you can really do or consume that doesn't make you a complete sheep. Yep. You have to like all, all the same stuff as the person who sees you doing it. Otherwise it's you falling into some sort of globalist trap. I at love all times. Yeah. I, I love conspiracy theorists. I love them, especially just watching them bicker. Cause it always, because there is no real God, like the Godwin's law of, of that world is not like, well, <laughs> that was Hitler. Like, you know, that you're basically Hitler. You're advocating the same thing as Hitler. You're basically a Nazi or whatever. Uh, their world, it's, oh, you're a shell <laughs> because you're you're not supporting my crazy conspiracy theory. And then everybody's like trying to be more crazier than the other. Like, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, it, it, it wasn't the Jews. It was lizard people. No, no, no. It wasn't the lizard people. It was the the the, 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 the interdimensional races that lives in the hollow earth. And like everybody's out doing each other. And the instant someone goes like, all right, that's fucking crazy. Ah, you're a shell. <laughs> it's beautiful. I love every moment of it. NASA shills, all of them. Yeah. <laughs> Hollow Earth, get on my flat Earth level, buddy. <laughs> get on my Earth ship, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you were in, you were into conspiracies. Is that 
Is that how I was? No, I was I was sort of the uh, comedic relief man on oh, the okay. conspiracy podcast. Yeah, which was which was sort of a neat idea, but uh, then the host decided that uh, since we since we started getting like three four thousand listeners a week, which is a decent like little hall in podcast world, if you're like putting out something weekly, it was, a blog, we getting, it was a blog talk radio too, wasn't it? No, it wasn't. It was it was on Laughcast. Okay, which was they have, they have a professional studio. He paid for it, um, not a lot, but and uh, we're we were so we had this following, and he decided, listen, we can't have this big of a following, you know, three thousand people, and uh, <laughs> and and not use it to to better humanity. So we are going to make this show all about weed activism. For people. and. And uh, yeah, for as so that I could become a professional weed activist, and that was where I was like, yeah, about that. And then I stayed on for a little while longer, and then there were a couple episodes that were uh, like, here's an hour on jury nullification, and I'm just like, bruh, bruh, <laughs> bruh, bruh, bruh. Yeah, not the bruh. best jury nullification outreach, but. <laughs> That's probably not the, the last thing the world it. needs is one more podcast where someone boringly explains yeah. what jury nullification is. At so length. why don't you explain to our audience what jury nullification is now? <laughs> so we're not burying the lead. Okay. Uh, <laughs> jury nullification is when you have a boring podcast. Okay. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Google it. There you go. Uh, I've always had problems with jury. No, I have a problem with people like saying like you should get on a jury as an anarchist. Get on a jury so you can nullify a law. And I'm like that would require me to like break all kinds of laws and risk going to jail. So no, <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Yeah, I'm, I'm just always skeptical of anybody who has just some blanket solution for everything because yeah. there's like you you see a lot of don't take the plea deal. Like you don't know somebody's specific legal situations. Yeah. Like there could be a lot of times where you want to take the plea deal, but like what, like I'm supposed to go to jail, like for potentially years so that you can have some sort of libertarian virtue about me not taking the plea deal. Yeah. Fuck out of my face. Or, or, or if you actually did it, that's probably a good idea for <laughs> you to take the plea. <laughs> probably yeah. a really good idea for you to take the plea. If you actually did something terrible, if you did something terrible, if you didn't, whatever, I don't care. It's up to you. You, you, you be the, the <laughs> why don't you decide your own damn life? I won't try to live vicariously through other people. And try to, and then on the other hand, try to exclaim like, "Oh, people should be able free to choose whatever they want to do," and I shouldn't. You right. shouldn't. You shouldn't. You shouldn't try to persuade like for, um, force is the wrong word. Uh, heavily persuade people to do things that they don't want to do. You know. Don't uh, mark yeah. their Stevens. Yeah, don't mark their Stevens. <laughs> well, see, no. Here's the thing: if 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 you're if you're in, if you're in legal land, then there's like this 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 loophole in the law which which allows you to like you know if you if you if you're in court and you say like the magic magic words and you th cast a couple of magic spells and click your heels three times, the the judge will have to like mindlessly let you off the hook, right? I think that's how I think that's how legal land works. Am I right? Yep it's 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 the flag fringe. Yeah, flag <laughs> fringe. <laughs> It's in the internet constitution. Yeah. Do you know have the black the Black's Law Dictionary? Oh, yeah. yeah. That, the, why you got to make it racist? I don't understand. <laughs> By the way, I think we should have a word from our sponsor. Uh, you yeah. you want to do the live read? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, the Lulberts is brought to you by Gropon. Gropon is selling you tickets to the new Kevin Spacey, Louis C.K. buddy cop movie called Stay in This Room. Uh, opening live at a middle school near you. Uh, you can get your tickets at Gropon.org. Sounds good. I really need to shave this, this goatee off now. <laughs> really got to. Yeah, yeah the, there was a Louis dead ender on the passive aggressive hour last night, and he was saying that, you know, I don't think it's sexual assault if he blocked the doorway and then whipped out his dick and started and got fully naked and jerked off in front of somebody like, 
Yeah, no, that's that's sexual assault, friend. Sorry, yeah. like you could be you could be you could be red pill all day long, but no, nah. yeah, <laughs> you're never gonna get me to believe that that's wait, not fucked up. Wait, is, is, hold on, was that a was that red pill joke a uh, reference about him being uh, a redhead? I find that very racist. I think you should apologize. All right, uh, no. As a, as a ginger American myself, I find this very racist. Detestable. Yeah, as as a as a, as a brown eyed ginger man myself, uh, I, this is clearly racist. This is not who I am, and this is not a costume. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Oh, I just thought of a great meme idea. I'm gonna write that down for later. But yeah. I, you know, I hope yep. I hope this Hollywood bloodbath continues because it's all it's just getting great. Except for the Louis C.K. thing, everything's about it just fantastic. I'm just loving. That's the thing it. about all bloodbaths is it's all great until it takes up someone you like. You know, it's not that I well I do like him, but it's not that I liked him. Like because I liked Kevin Spacey, but you know it it, it didn't affect me. This one affects me because I look like Louis C.K. I just I like I already, I already said like. I, be, People think that I'm Louis C.K., which was great back then because it was like, oh, cool, look, a cool celebrity. Now everybody's going to look like, oh, look, here's that dude. Watch out. He's going to masturbate in front of you, which is true. But, I mean, I don't want to yeah, have that reputation. That's a different so, thing. <laughs> you're mad that the perception is going to reflect reality. Gotcha. Yeah, got it. Oh, no. People <laughs> think I'm going to masturbate in front of them just because I'm extremely likely to masturbate in front of them. You're, <laughs> master you're masturbating in front of them right now. It's called a podcast. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> No, this is actually a circle jerk, and that's why I have a co-host. <laughs> this is true. You, the <laughs> audience, are the you, the audience, are the third part, and you come last. Yeah, and we lock the door behind us. You have to keep listening. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> but I'm loving this bloodbath. It's great, fantastic. I and and it, it wouldn't be so great if, if they weren't spending the entire last decade ta talking about how everybody's so horrible uh, who who like do all these these weird sexual things to women and they, they harass them and how dare they. And Trump's an evil guy. Cause he, he said, grab him by the pussy, which he is, but I mean, <laughs> but it's like, but it's like, yeah, but look what you're doing. Like, look what you specifically you are doing, you know, Harvey Weinstein. <sighs> it's fantastic. I'm assuming Bill Clinton's still just the guy who likes to, who likes a good time. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's funny how everybody around Hillary Clinton is getting turned out to be some sort of sexual predator. At first, it was just, oh, yeah, it was just her husband. And then it's like, okay, Anthony Weiner, uh, now Harvey Weinstein. Uh, who else is going to Now the assistant phone? manager of Comet Ping Pong. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad for Comet Ping Pong on one hand, though. Because <laughs> the whole thing was crap. Yeah, because everybody else at least got to meet celebrities. Yeah. They only got these, like, square Hollywood types that came in. I mean, Washington, D.C., like, Beltway yeah. dweebs. Well, they got to meet some Alex Jones fans, or at least one. <laughs> you know what I was reminded of by a kid on the ghost tour the other day? So I do ghost tours, for those of you who are unfamiliar. And uh, somebody reminded me that I got thrown out of Ohio's bicentennial. I forgot this happened. So Ohio turned 200 years old in 2003, and uh, I was back in Ohio. And my niece's school was having a thing about Ohio's bicentennial. And the lieutenant governor of Ohio was going to speak. And the governor of Ohio at the time had a 9% approval rating. He was like one of the most unpopular governors in American history. And the lieutenant governor was coming and speaking. And the teacher was talking to the class before the lieutenant governor came in. And... She says to the kids the following sentence, listen, you are going to be on your absolute, want to be on your absolute best behavior because this is probably going to be the most important day of your life. <laughs> the Lieutenant governor speaking at an elementary school for the 200th bicentennial of Ohio. And I bet still to this day, none of them still give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> Not a single one of them. None of them remember. But I guffawed. Pa! Was my exact word. <laughs> okay. 
And then a- after she shooed the children out, she gave me the hand. And she goes, no, 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 no. You can stay here. <laughs> I sat there. <laughs> the end. Yep. Yeah. So the moral of the story is, they're, fuck Ohio. Uh, this is an interesting yep. headline I just stumbled across, across, and it's from a reputable source. Breaking news. Breaking news. The world doesn't even know who to admire anymore after Tom, Tom Hanks murders five. Uh, it's a reputable site. I've seen it many times. It's called The Onion. Is that what it's Yeah. It's a French one, Onion. Oh, The Onion. Yeah. Le Onion Diplomatique. <laughs> it, it, I'm, I don't know. It, it's, every time I go through my feed, there's just another like celebrity face like, oh, look at this evil fuck. <laughs> I'm trying to find something interesting to talk about, but all I see is like uh, Hollywood uh, molesters everywhere. Oh, and Al- Hollywood you know, molesters. Alex, Alex Jones is having a. F- I bet he's. I haven't been listening, you know, to any of the little clips that's coming out. Bones Jones. But I'm sure he's happier than a pig and shit right now, because this is what he's been saying for like ever. <laughs> but Forever. he had no evidence for it, though. There was just. I think his evidence was like they're all Satanists and they all do blood rituals. Yep. Yeah. That's how they roll. Yep. That's been his. That's been the beat he's been on for forever. The problem, though, is that now he got the president elected. So, like, there's one of the most powerful officials on earth that he put there, kind of. So, kind of undercuts everybody in powers against you when you put one of them there. But whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, did you get yourself a chainsaw bayonet yet? Oh, I need to get one. It sounds like the greatest thing ever. And I, I love the, all the memes that have been coming out about this thing. Yeah, that, that's that been meme Christmas. Yeah. Love I love the one with uh, the, the copy of Unique and its property bayonet. <laughs> the one with the bee's nest on it was good. Yeah. I thought the funniest thing of all was uh, Seamus had posted this thing on his Patreon saying like, I, I accidentally predicted something again because <laughs> he had like this uh, video and I can't remember what it was about. I think it was about the I don't know if it was about the NRA or what. I think no, maybe it was about gun control because they sh- he showed like this gun and on the gun there was like a little chain. Well, it wasn't a buzz saw or chainsaw. It was a uh, what the f- was it a buzz saw? The ones that spin around in circles. Yeah, like on the yeah, gun. It had a, a buzz saw. Yeah, it had a buzz saw bayonet on it. <laughs> and I was like, well, close. That's close. Is, is this is this yeah. is this chainsaw thing real? Can I really get one of these things? I might really put down the money to get an AR-15 if I can get a ch- chainsaw. <laughs> if I the get a chainsaw, chainsaw on bay it. Of that. I need to USA Today life. put that out too. That was the best part. Yeah, like the face that launched a million infographics, and I like that their defense was we never said he had one. We just <laughs> said he could. <laughs> If it's real, I need one. I mean, that's if I can get one on a shotgun, that'd be like I, I would just. I call don't know. It. I spent the better part of like twenty minutes trying to find video of a chainsaw bayonet just because I wanted to see it uh, in action. But like, think of how awesome that is. Like, yeah, it 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 became the most anti-gun control message they could possibly put out there, completely unintentionally, because <laughs> nobody's thinking like, let's ban these things. Everybody's thinking like, wow, like. We need to make smaller chainsaw bayonets and make, find a way to get them on handguns. Yeah. And, yeah. The only thing that could stop a bad guy with a chainsaw bayonet is a good guy with a chainsaw bayonet. <laughs> with a buzzsaw. <laughs> yeah. A buzzsaw bayonet. <laughs> we need to talk about common sense chainsaw bayonet control in this country. <laughs> That's all there is to it. Yeah. I'm just Common I've been, sense. I've been, I've been having this conversation with, with, I don't know, I don't know how I keep getting into these conversations with, with people. Uh, about about gun laws and it always and this time it was talking about loopholes and it seems like none of these people even know what a fucking loophole is and i've i've been going insane like trying to explain to people like no a loophole in a law is not when the government fucks up in its own law <laughs> like if, if you want a law like this is the law that you wanted to have criminal background checks someone that commits domestic violence should not have a gun that's a law and they enter it in the computer when you violate the law but they didn't enter in the computer. They that's 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 this is the government you wanted, right? 
This is the efficiency that you should expect. This is what you wanted. Okay. And they fucked it up like they normally do. It's not a loophole. And it's just been a constant like pulling of teeth. It's like, well, what do you call it when a system allows for someone to get a gun? It's not a loophole. (laughs) Like everything's been a loophole. Everything I've been talking about is a loophole. Fucking people having bump stocks is a loophole. Mm. Everything yeah. is well, it's easier to get a bump. It's easier. It's easier to to buy a bump sock than to buy mouthwash. It's easier. It's easier to buy a chainsaw bayonet than it is to buy a movie ticket. Yeah, except for the price, that that's a pretty big stomp. I think like four hundred bucks for. Well, I think they were like two hundred bucks before the Vegas shooting. Now they're like four hundred because of how much is a chainsaw bayonet? Answer, I, you know, Christ. cheap at any cost. Oh, I I bet sales have skyrocketed for that thing. Like yeah, every, the two that existed for freak shows on FPS Russia, <laughs> oh, <laughs> something like it, that. <laughs> imagine being the guy holding ten chainsaw bayonets at the moment. There's this huge spike in demand. Yeah, oh, like, God. oh God, like an early Bitcoin investor, except with <laughs> chainsaw bayonets. <laughs> I bought them when they were ten bucks a pop. They were just a novelty item. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would I would much rather have it on a shotgun and I could just call the shotgun ash. Like that'll just <laughs> it's like a boomstick and a chainsaw. That's it. There we go. That's my shitty do- joke of yeah. the day. It's been a long day. <laughs> you gotta have an evil dead reference somewhere. Day's been That's... longer than a shotgun with a chainsaw bayonet. <laughs> Uh, but I, I really do want if, if I can if I can get a, an AR-15 with a, uh, a unique in its property chainsaw, I'll, I'll be happy. Slaying all the spirits. Yeah, it's it's good to keep your goals achievable in life. I find. Yeah. Yeah, you know, all I want in this world is a your food will be ready before America is great again apron, <laughs> and a chainsaw bayonet, and a nuclear warhead. That's it. Yeah, or well, McNuke. McNuke. Yeah. yeah. Got to have a McNuke. Mc... Yep. Oh, here, here's one with a you can put one with a little um, Federal Reserve building on it. It's a w- weapon of monetary destruction. There you go. Oh. You should get one of those projector lights that puts that on there. That'll be the most radical libertarian <laughs> activism ever done. <laughs> Think of the defense fund. Jesus Christ. Uh, oh yeah, someone needs to do activism. Think of the defense fund meme. Oscars twenty eighteen to feature new dead to us segment. <laughs> wow, too soon. Spicy. That's pretty damn spicy. That's pretty spicy. Yeah. Oh, here's one. You get one with a with a pizza cutter on the end. A, a pizza cutter bayonet. Ah, perfect for comet ping pong. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> If he had one of those things, he probably would have got to the bottom of the the pedo sex ring. I, I think he would. Have. Yeah. So they didn't have enough Reddit sleuths working on it. That's the problem. Yeah, I know, right? So ever he, since their ever since their subreddit got deleted. Do you like the new? Because uh, yeah, Open Bazaar two point did, did, Are you digging it at all? I'm not finding it's okay. too much different from. Well, there's yeah. a few things different that I like, but yeah. I, I was never on Open Bazaar one, so I can't speak to okay. the differences. Yeah, but you know, I like Open Bazaar. It's a, it's a good interface. Uh, everybody like, seems nice. Yeah, I like the interface, and I, the the more I'm playing with this one, I'm like, I'm kind of liking it, but I'm not sure if it's fixed all the problems that I had with the first one, which is like it's still hard as fuck to find things. And I was I I looked for like voluntarist, and I I know that Davi Barker has got his fucking store on there somewhere. And nothing, no results. I think I got no results for libertarian or libertarians. I'm like, this is not right. I did find Bitcoin. Like when I typed in Bitcoin, I got lots of stuff. But for a lot, of, and then you have like different like search engines you can use, and then you can add your own search engine. I don't know if my stuff is showing up on there because no one is looking at my stuff. I have no one following me. I don't know how this works yet. Yeah, I don't have followers or anything. Yeah, like as soon as I hopped on Open Bazaar one, it was just like a tidal wave of people following me. It just and I didn't. I just followed like one thing. It was like the 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 thing that they make you follow, and then it was just like an onslaught of people following me. And I was like, great, because you know that just that that gets you in the system where you're you can you can be searchable. 
and no one no one is adding me so i don't know if i'm in the search engines or not i don't know how any of this works i know that if my store goes on offline it's available for other people but does that only work if it follows me like i can't get any information about this stuff it's like so it's like pulling teeth about getting information about this also i don't it's kind of sad but i don't think a lot of people are going on open bazaar to buy aprons it's whack yeah, but libertarians because like most bag. of the ads I see, it's like, "Yo, you want a pound of a kush? You want like, etc." It's yeah. not. Which I guess you can use it with Tor. So selling drugs on it, it's, it's viable. Why not? Yeah, I don't know. It's just so confusing. Open Bazaar needs to get their shit together. Like, it's a great fucking idea. It's a decentralized marketplace. You know, she can use cryptocurrency. I, th- I think they have. Am I wrong? Do they have other cryptocurrencies besides Bitcoin? They should. I think they have Ethereum, but don't quote me on that. I would not take that. <laughs> I had someone offering me Ethereum donation. They're like, could you take Ethereum or, or Litecoin? I was like, I'd much rather have Litecoin. And then I gave them the wrong address anyway, so it didn't matter. Uh, <laughs> I fucked that one up. That was my mistake. Um, but I was like, yeah, I, I'm not going to fuck with Ethereum. Ethereum seems like a, a very dark black hole where everybody keeps exploiting the system and, and winning out. It's, it's, it's almost like Jeff Berwick is, is fucking running it or something. I don't know. Oh, Jeff. Yeah. Everybody's getting scammed on that thing. But that, then it's always like, well, you know, they follow the rules. But it's like, yeah, but if the rules suck, I'm not going to play. <laughs> I'm just not going to play. You know, it's like it's like that that fucking e- that shitty Dragon Ball Z movie that came out. You know, the first rule is there are no rules. You know, the second rule is don't don't fall on the ground. Like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> there was no rules. Pick one. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I don't follow Dragon Balls. I'm too pure of a libertarian for that. Uh, I think it's an absolute waste of time. I'm just too principled to fall into such distractions. I stay focused on the real issues mainly. Uh, so, yeah. Well, what's, what's more important that, than shitty movies? You're right. Well, uh, I don't know. If, if if it's a good shitty movie, like Alongside Night, the greatest movie ever made. Yeah. The Room. <laughs> I, the I can't, Room. I can't wait for Disaster Artist to come out. Oh, I'm, I'm counting the days. I'll take a day off of work for that one. What? D- disaster Artist. Uh, it's a film what about it? what how they made the room. It's a movie about Tommy Wiseau and oh yeah, yeah it's gonna be great. You're tearing me apart. <laughs> it, it it's some of the stuff that that I've been reading about about because I haven't read the book and the 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 book is based on it was that co- the guy that played oh hi Mark you know the guy that played Mark wrote the book about how, what his experience was making that movie with them because they are I guess they're still friends and. He said that like the dude kept forgetting his long. This is the guy that wrote the script and was funding his own movie. He dumped six million dollars of his own of his own funds into this movie to get made, and he can't even remember his own lines. And they took like thirty different takes just to do the uh, the part where he was coming out of the the roof, and he was like, "I did not hear that. It's not true. I did not." Oh, hi, Mark. It took him like a million takes just to get that one fucking right. Yeah. So they're they're making a like a biopic about the the making of that film which is great. I saw the emoji movie and that was a God awful piece of shit. Uh, and then I went and saw like, my little pony thinking like, okay, this is going to be a terrible movie and I'll have something to, to rant about on my podcast, my little Patreon podcast. And it turned out to be wor- and surprisingly turned out to be worse than the emoji movie. Worse than the emoji. I, Wait, I was what? infuriated. That movie had me infuriated. It was so bad. Like I was screaming in my car. <laughs> I posted it for free. If you can find it on my, my Patreon, you can listen to it. But yeah, the My Little Pony movie, believe it or not, worse than the Emoji movie. Damn, did not see that coming. Yeah, I thought it would be just like a little bit better, just kind of boring because I'm not. Did you see Angry Pony. Birds? I tried tried watching it. And I just I just couldn't. It's it's not bad enough for me to sit through it. There there has to be a certain threshold. If it's just a boring film, I'm just not interested. So I just kind of skimmed through the rest of the movie after the first like 30 minutes i was just like okay this is kind of bad uh and it seemed to be like this allegory against immigration or refugee yeah it was a very red-pilled movie yeah Mm -hmm. it was terrible 
but it was it was terrible before I I I was like, oh, this really is a red pill movie. <laughs> it was just it was just not entertaining at all. Uh, and I actually do like Angry Birds the game. Like I was playing it for a while, and then I got fed up with it, and I was like, fuck this, I can't stand mobile games. Like I I I, I want to have a mobile game that I can play and stick with it but after a while i'm just like ah fuck this i'll get past the, i'll get to a level i can't reach i can't beat and I'm like ah fuck it i'm over it i'm not even gonna try to learn how to beat it i'm just done but yeah, i don't know they've just been pumping out all kinds of crap lately but ragnarok was good ragnarok was awesome I'll fucking watch that again. they gotta get those last rapes in while they still can <laughs> Yeah, before everybody kind of turns out to be sec- – I'm just waiting for Chris Hemsworth to be a rapist. Um, Michael Bay. Yeah, Michael Bay. Oh, I, I, I bet you Michael Bay is going to be on that list. He's coming up, man. What, he's, Nicolas Cage. He, every, everything is like – everything in all of his movies is like, oh, hot chick, hot chick, hot chick, explosion, hot chick, hot chick, explosion. What if there's a real like out of out of left field what like Morgan Freeman? <laughs> well, can you really Only guilty can, man in Shawshank? Can you really? Here's the question though. I mean, you, you're a theology scholar. Uh, is it rape if God rapes you? Uh, you'd have to ask Meryl Streep about Harvey oh, Weinstein. Oh, saucy. Oh, that was a hot take. That was hot. Yep. Nice joke. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Law of averages had to kick in eventually. Am I right, fellas? <laughs> eventually. <laughs> had to get I, one I, solid I, joke. I'm, I'm trying to find something interesting in my feed. Usually there's lots of great stuff, but everything is just like, oh, this guy raped this guy, and this guy raped we this We hit him girl. with the news. You want to go to Naming the Apron and Company? We Go to the official. Yeah, let's go to the name of the apron. So you had a couple. You had a couple ideas pitched. We had a couple ideas. I I ran a poll on Twitter, and then because it's a true democracy, we are going to read them again. Uh, we're going to vote. I'll give. Uh, I'll look at your votes on Twitter and uh, listen beef. to Jim's vote. And then because it's a true democracy, I will do whatever the fuck I want because <laughs> I have the aprons and I have the money. So. Uh, let's go to the names. So the first option is the first one that I came up with, uh, which is Nifty Apron Purveyors. Uh, it's a flexible name. You could you could do a lot of different aprons under Nifty Apron Purveyors. It obviously it abbreviates to Nap. Uh, <laughs> I didn't even think of that. Good, yeah. good job, fam. Yeah. So that that that's that that was the early front runner. The next one is gourmet pride. Mm, so not digging gourmet that one. pride. I think I'm like the Didn't first get any votes in the Twitter poll. Yeah, uh, res- th- there were there were a total of ten votes in the in the Twitter poll. Six went to apron purveyors. Forty, forty uh, percent. So four of the votes Ooh. in the Twitter poll went to went to our next one, which is aprons are not a crime. Uh, that one's a good one. I think I like the that, first that, one better. That's a good one. That's a good one. I'm thinking I might call it, I, I might call it Nifty Apron Purveyors and then have the website be apronsarenotacrime.com. Uh try to get that as the domain. Well, potentially. Now, now it's gone. Now it's gone. Someone just bought it. Someone just bought it. Someone just bought Gull it. Oh darn. It's cool. Uh then uh not, we we uh Derek J suggested the American Apron Corporation, and I said, You misspelled Somalian. And <laughs> it was pointed out that Somalian Apron Company it does abbreviate as SAC. So, Ooh. Uh, very Derek J. flavored suggestions. And then uh, Mav Fiend, secret weapon of the Twitterverse, uh, visits me in Facebook jail all the time. He suggested make aprons great again. That one's uh, good. That one's really good. Not a bad suggestion, but it comes with kind of an expiration date because yeah. once Trump's gone. Yeah, I would hope that I'd still be peddling aprons. But well, uh, you, you can hope for another Republican bringing it back because originally that was, I think that was originally uh, Ronald Reagan's campaign slogan or a, a slogan that he had used, but it wasn't like his, it, he didn't make hats out of it. 
See, that's that that, that was where that was where Trump got his yeah. big advantage. Historic victory. Yeah. I like when he brings up the election at, at totally unrelated times. <laughs> like, well, I did win the election. Yeah. <laughs> Like, oh Trump! You, you could have had Hill. I, I love every anytime something bad happens when Trump's in the helm. It's like, oh well, he he promised he was going to get out of us out of Af Afghanistan, and he, now he's promising to stick around for another few years. Well, would you want Hillary? No. <laughs> <laughs> what to point? Yeah, to uh, it's it's such an infantile like system of reasoning. Like to point out a flaw in any politician is a explicit endorsement of any opposing politician. Yeah, when, and when you hear it from so-called the greatest philosopher, you know, that that if didn't exist, would it would have held liberty back another 2,500 years saying that it's kind of like, come on, man, you're a philosopher. You know, that's not a, that's not a rational line of reasoning, especially since like a lot of these people were backing Trump during the primaries. And I'm like, well, if we're going to take the most libertarian option in the Republican party, it's not Trump. Like it, the Trump's on the last last of that list, except yeah. no, I think Lindsey Graham would have been worse, less libertarian. Yeah, Ted uh, Cruz. Well, yeah, or, but he's never going to get elected. He's yeah. the pitch boy from thir he's the elevator boy from Thirty Rock. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsey Graham is gay. Can we just can we just admit that already? I don't think so. You don't? No, I think he's just Southern. But he's never been he married. Might, I mean, he might be gay, he's but never been married. So a lot of people have never been married. I've never been married. Does that make me gay? Oh. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, that maybe that I don't think I, I don't really think of myself as gay, though. I think of myself as sumo sexual. That, as a it's gutter different. faggot. I think that's yeah. the term that you Yeah, use. it's, it's, it's so different. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, I, like, I don't ever go to like, I, I don't ever have to go to the mall. Like, there's no expectations, really. It's just. Yeah. You know. All right, so were there any other submissions? I think we got deviated <laughs> by election talk. Don't don't get me started on politics, man. Like that's that's my that's my that's that's my that's 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 you my want that as an apron. Nah, that might be a good apron. Don't get me started on politics, man. <laughs> <laughs> Who that might be a that might be a limited run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, no, it should be like well, no, it should be well done. Don't get me started on politics, man. <laughs> and then have a little helicopter yeah, I, underneath it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, of those, uh, what do you think, Jim? I'm going to go with the first one just because the initials are great. Yeah. And, uh, Nifty it, it, apron prepares. It's, it's a little shout out to the, to, to my community. Yeah. And you could, you could definitely make an interesting kind of logo out of it. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Put a little apron like, or make like the NAP in the shape of an apron somehow. <laughs> oh, that would be cool. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. I'll have to, do, I'll have to hop on Fiverr and see if anyone can get off that. Oh, dude. Yeah. That, that, that shouldn't be no problem whatsoever. Uh, or if anybody listening to this wants to make a nifty apron purveyors logo and send it to me, uh, yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a way to get yourself a free apron. Yeah. I might, I'll, yep. just, I'll probably just do it anyway, but I need to buy two. Uh, so All right, word, yeah. To hit me up. Yeah. 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 So mine will be free if, if you choose mine anyway. But I really, yep. I really need to get a. Um, I, I need to purchase Adobe Photoshop. Yes, purchase it with money. <clears throat> McAfee. Yeah, I need to purchase it with with money. I I use uh. You ever use Pixlr? Poor man's Photoshop. No. I uh, love Pixlr. Oh, you get, and don't get me started on GIMP. GIMP. GIMP's a freak show of shit. <laughs> Just terrible, terrible, god awful shit. So yeah, so so you got my vote. So what what are we at? We at we at the nap? Is that what we're doing? Yeah, that that's what we're going with. Nifty, Nifty apron, apron purveyors. purveyors. So I'll I'll we'll get some audio ads. Get me a website. Uh, I'll probably just buy buy like a do, buy a domain to be announced after I buy it. And uh, nap that, apron. That, yeah, and. <laughs> and, and, and <laughs> Please tell me there's that subdomain or that domain. Is it? 
Is it a real thing? I mean, they got dot Vegas. Why not apron? Yeah. Nap. Nap dot apron. Yeah, you gotta you gotta keep some non aggression in your aprons. Let's see. I'm yeah, I'll probably, I'll probably, I'll see probably buy the domain and then just have it go back to aprons.lalberts.com. So sorry, nap.com is not available. Who to thunk it? Yeah, well that's I figured as much. Yeah. Well there's seventy other ones. Dot website dot network dot tips dot technology dot directory marketing house shop. Oh, Give me go. nap dot nap dot shop. Nap dot shop. It's gonna cost you a cool four grand. Jeez. Yeah, that's definitely not gonna happen. No. Dot lawyer. <laughs> dot store. Dot lawyer. Dot Vegas for seventy bucks. Nap dot vote. Is that Oh, this is napshot.info. Okay, so now I guess we're out of Napshop. We're out of naps. Yeah. I think we ran oh, a nap sad. about the dot uh dot uh where, where did it stop at? Dot dot Vegas. That was the last one. Dot Vegas was the last one. Yeah. You got Nap FM for two hundred bucks almost. Yeah, see, yeah, that's nap a dot church. Expensive. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> all of a sudden the aprons are all tax exempt yeah <laughs> start a religion there you go start a religion everybody has to wear aprons mm -hmm. and there you have you to go. buy the aprons too and you these aren't free the, aprons yeah. well it's, no it's it's a it's a mandatory donation it's like scientology you know yeah yeah, we don't charge for services. It's just a it's just a mandatory donation for services. Nap dot marketing. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> nap dot marketing. Is there nap dot please donate? No, there's nap dot guru though. Nap, All right. Nap parts. No, you're thinking of Napa Auto Parts. <laughs> Nap design, nap directory, nap marketing, nap dot house. I think that's a that's a keen activist center, isn't it? Uh, nap dot nice. Yeah, that's all I got. This these these are pretty bad. Your three letter three letter uh, things is bad for domains. Really bad. And they're all expensive. This one. Yeah. So nap dot global. Yeah, I'm not going. With, I'm not going with the three letter though. Yeah. So, so nap dot global, you're looking at about eight grand for a fucking domain. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah. Hmm. Oh well. Mm. Well, mm -hmm. you, you got you got plenty to work with. So. Yeah, I do. So you, are you gonna you're gonna build a website then? Yeah, okay. I got a, I got an apron. Get, I got an apron it. empire to get run on it. So it's aprons dot dot com. And yep. if that's not working yet, hit you up on on the face beef. Miller, on Miller. the face beef, on the Twitters. I think but, you're the only yeah. person on Facebook called Steve Miller Miller hyphen Miller Stephen hyphen Miller or Stephen. No, not Miller, even Stephen. Just just plain Steve, up Steve. Yeah, Steve hyphen. Or, Miller. Damn it, Steve, Steve Miller hyphen Miller. The only one. Fourth there. time's a charm. Yeah, yeah. The, are there, yeah, the, the only one there. Eight. I uh, I also I'm on Twitter at Miller twice and my profile picture is a lady wearing the not aggress the cook apron that you need to go nice. out and purchase for thir for thirteen dollars post paid to anywhere in the U S. So you're not Kim Jong Un in a baseball hat anymore. Yo, okay. First of all, you need to back up off Hyun Jin Ryu. Okay. Uh, because that's my man. They, okay. I like say what you want about Tim Cook. He might be a molester. He might not be. He might be just a creepy Alleged, old man. Not even allegedly. I, he's definitely a rice queen. But I can tell you one thing with absolute certainty about Tim Cook, and that is he will never, in all his years in California, love Hyun Jin Ryu as much as I do. <laughs> I like. I've never felt feelings of that way uh, of that way for any pro athlete, and. I watch his commercials from Korea, which are on YouTube. And my favorite is this one he did for a phone card company because buying phone cards with minutes is big in Korea. And uh, he sings this little song and he doesn't have all that great voice, but 
Yeah, it'll just well, make my day. Chin, 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 a chin around, chin around, and it can in a car, and I kiss it at a concert, and I kiss it at a concert, chin, chin, meet a chin, chin, kare, chin, a good, a good, a good, a good, I take it you, you've watched that quite a bit because I don't think you speak Korean. <laughs> No, nah, and I think if any Korean listened to what I just said, they'd be like, "What wow. in the fuck?" Yeah. But. So, so you 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 think that Tim Cook doesn't love him more? He is. It's not. It's not possible. Have you tried uh, to call in and uh, to try to call in and debate him? He skips uh, his critics to the front of the line. So I hear. <laughs> Very well done. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you got anything else to plug? <laughs> pa- no, pass- that's pass- it. What was the uh, other pass- yeah, eight- power? Passive aggressive hour, uh, that, and yeah, that's pretty much it. And uh, love one another. Uh, and uh, if anybody who has a job that's not a job, such as improv or activism, uh, tries to involve you <laughs> in a business deal, say no. God damn it! All right, and don't donate. You know. <laughs> a libertarian don't donate yeah. to anybody if there's a natural disaster tell people to fuck themselves because there's almost <laughs> something about the free market like that that's what they're gonna want yeah, like, americans gonna... are goddamn charitable what do you mean i have to donate <laughs> <laughs> yeah you better fuck out of my face yeah get out of here <laughs> I mean, try to coerce me by asking me to voluntarily do something you better fuck out of my face don't tell me what to do and you and I'll tell you one fucking thing. You better, 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 better not be selling novelty aprons in my bo- in my group for free market people yeah. because our group about the free market can't have people selling things. No. Illegal. That's that's the greatest irony of all is that I'm off of Facebook for trying to sell things for peop- to people who preach free markets. It's, it's so beautiful, the irony. I'll take a 30-day ban just for that story alone. You know? Yeah. And the thing is, like, I'm a hardened Facebook prisoner lifer by now. So, yeah, like, I could do 30 days standing on my head. You know, like, I'm a prison tat, whatever. <laughs> Followed it. I, I eat lunch with the alt right now so that, you know, I don't get beat up. Aryan Brotherhood. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that sucks. I have yeah. to have lunch with Richard Spencer on Twitter. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Are you still on the fiends or no? I have to uh, ask this question now because a lot of people are like, "Oh yeah, you're on the fiend still?" Nope. Whoa, whoa. What yeah, happened? no, I'm on the fiend, I'm on the fiend still. It's just my work schedule is I, I have to get up at six a.m. every day. Okay. So yeah, and I'm on the East Coast. If I were on the West Coast, I would pro- I could probably do the fiends more often. But it's this it's the getting off at three a.m. and then having to be up at six that I cannot abide. Yeah. It, it was so. great for me because I'm a night. It was a I was a night owl and I'm on the West Coast, so it was like perfect. It was like I go to work at ten o'clock during the weekday, and then on my weekend, quote unquote, even though it's not on a weekend, I just basically oh ten o'clock, I got to be on the air. Okay, and, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So and, then, and, and then you and then you start drinking at at six a.m. because you're a bad drunk. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I, I, I got to tell you, man, that's the greatest thing ever. Uh, is is walking into a bar at six a.m. and catching all the all the people that have been up all night drinking. Oh yeah, and they're uh, or or people will see you drinking at six a.m. They're like, man, look at that guy. I bet he's a hardcore alcoholic. It's like, dude, this is the first beer I had this month. You know, granted, it's the tenth, but <laughs> but uh, but uh, it's like no, like it's, it's six a.m. is six p.m. Your six a.m. is my six p.m. And I, I kind of like it at the same time. And uh, easy pickings. Easy pickings. I get all that. Isn't that a bills. country singer? Is it? Easy I'm, pickings, yeah. Yeah, or I thought it was slim pickings. Yeah, it is slim pickings. <laughs> My bad. Speaking of country mm-hmm. albums, you, you got to check out this album. Uh, it's called Duo D Twang. I will try to find the, out, the fucking name of the artist that did it. Because I love it so much, I don't even remember the van name. <laughs> right? It's my favorite. Yeah. Okay, no. Is it? No. What the fuck is what? it called? No. I, don't, I don't know what the name of this fucking album is called. It doesn't even have it on the Wikipedia or the name of the band. Okay. Oh, shit. Maybe it is. It's, it's just, okay, so it's, it's... No, that's the name of the band is Duo D. Twang. The album is called Four Foot Shack. Uh, and it's Les Claypool. 
And Is that Shaq with CK or Shaq with a Q? Like Ooh. four foot Shaquille O'Neal. That would be an interesting. Oh god damn, that would be amazing if you had like a midget basketball league where you have like a four <laughs> like a four foot Shaq that towered over everybody else in the league who was like three three. Uh like basketball back in the day when 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 Jews were the 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 most common players. Oh, yeah, but, yeah. So yeah, you should check it out. Do you like Primus? All right. Nope. Wow. I only listen to Luke Bryan and ICP. We've been over this. Okay. So you got to check this yeah. out. If it, it's, it, it's called if, it, if, it, if, it, if it's not pop country and if it's not white rap done by clowns, I'm simply not interested. Well, it's it's definitely country, but it's Primus country with acoustics. I think he has an acoustic banjo. No, it's not a banjo. Could be, I thought it was a bass banjo for a while. No, so Les Claypool's Do a D-Twang. The album's called Four Foot Shack. And I had it on vinyl, and I was doing a Primus like thing on my on my Patreon, which that one's free. You can listen to that one. It's like a fucking hour long by talking about Primus. And at the very end, I was like, oh, that's fucking right. There was another country album, and I have it on vinyl. Why did I fucking forget this one? And I don't even remember the band name. And I was even listening to it on the way over here, and I was like, I think the album was called Duo D20. No, that's the name of the band. It's the name of the band. Yeah, fucking A. Fucking A. Yeah, it's, it, it's so good. It cemented itself in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Anything else? Uh, if you're in the Philadelphia area, Truth or Elvis on January 30th oh, shit, at, yeah. at, at, the, at, at the North Penn VFW Hall. Confirmed Dolly, uh, Truth or Dolly yes. uh, opening. Still yeah. Beam, so. Still beam, still beam, still beams. I'm down. Your kisses yeah. lift me higher like a steel beam catching fire. <laughs> you melt my beam of steel with burning fuel. It's just a half a tank of burning fuel. <laughs> yep. We're going to have a good time. Sorry, and, yeah. uh, you need a video uh, this, this time, I, This time, I promise uh, to not uh, be threatened by any veterans. Uh, oh, wow. Th- th- this, is, this has been a recurring thing at Truth or Elvis Cakes where uh, some uh, mouth-breathing Philly dude will get up and scream about how, you know, because he had a level of service that makes him unfit to tie... I'm fit to tie Lou Fiend's memeing shoes. Uh, that gives him a right to stand up and, and and interrupt Truth or Elvis. And yeah, that's just not the case. We're coming up on the one year anniversary of the bombing of Truth or Elvis at the Black Friday Comedy Festival. Every year, a local improv theater throws a 24 hour comedy marathon where it's just 24 hours of comedy and truth or Elvis got a half hour last year wow. and just ate shit the entire time. They hated truth or Elvis because it was improv people and they were very into, you yeah. know, comedy that punches up and that doesn't, uh, that doesn't accuse George W. Bush of murdering <laughs> thousands of people <laughs> via the words of an Elvis song. <laughs> So, yeah, check that yeah. out. Worms. Yep. I'll talk, yeah, I'll talk to you later. Yeah, yep, worms. worms.